Good morning, CSL Simi Valley. So good to have you here for our VERT service this morning. Woo, let's get cranking. Man, I'm, oh my goodness. I, I have been in prayer all morning. 560 fires here in the state of California. And then two twin tropical storms, one hurricane, Hurricane Marco and Tropical Storm Laura, back to back within 48 hours of landfall in the same part of the Gulf of Coast of Mexico, somewhere between Apalachicola, Florida and Corpus Christi, Texas. This is, the universe is, the planet is having some serious issues with its main uh, tenets, the human species. We are cooperating in a very interesting way. The fires, um, so complex that they've had to give them so immense and, and, and complex that they've had to give them complex names. So CSU fire, the CZN fire, the TCU fire, based on all the various counties that are involved in these fires that the state burns from almost coast to coast and border to sea. It's a tough, tough, tough time for us all. So we're going to hold everyone that's in harm's way in deep, deep prayer today and know that Something magnificent and marvelous is unfolding as this takes place because all of the spirit of activity is coming together for all those to work toward bringing some healing, bringing some resolution, and putting these fires out and then finding a way to be more sustainable in how we, how we react and respond to this thing called Mother Nature. You know, this has been a month where we've been talking about the value of unity, of inclusion. It's interesting that our our home office, the Centers for Spiritual Living, puts out a pamphlet a year in advance of all the talk ideas so that we can all, as a movement, because Dr. Holmes believed in the power of collective thought, so as a movement, we all come together to hold these ideas to, in, in, in consciousness, knowing that as we do that, we become the activators for a shift to take place, and the month of August is in, called Inclusion in Action, and so we've been talking about this month, Inclusion in Action, starting the month off with Ja Love, to talk about the power of God's love expressed through each and every one of us. And then what's in your wallet? What's in your consciousness getting in the way of that jaw love? And then yes, last week, the divine palette. How do we use all the colors, all the aspects of our nature, all the personality characteristics that we have together to create this blended activity of life that moves us into a new expression, into a higher form of livingness? That's what we've done. And it's interesting that we did this a year in advance. Who knew that we'd have to go through the eight minutes and 46 seconds that put people out into the streets to look at a new way way of inclusion and to look at a new way of acting, uh, putting diversity into action and making a diversity a inclusionary idea. So uh, hats off to our Centers for Spiritual Living Steering Committee that put this together and that visioned in such a way that their clarity was outpictured as an opportunity for us to be that prayer treatment. Dr. Holmes says ours is a teaching order, not a preaching order. And the teaching we do is to teach all of us how we can think in ways that can shift and change the world. Today, we're going to continue that as we talk about the ties that bind. That's some of the things we've been doing this month, the prayer that's going out for all those that are in the way of the fires and all those that are on the edges of looking at what's happening out in the sea, coming off from the oceans and from the Gulf of Mexico troubling, troubling times for sure. But we can get through it because we are a resilient species. We are resilient and we're powerful, especially when we connect together. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. But I just wanted to outline some of those things for you so you can understand where we've been going this month and where we're headed and why we move in this direction because the consciousness unified becomes that much more powerful. So one of the ways we also do that is by reciting our vision and mission statement each and every week. And here it is for you now. We're community, inclusive, loving, and authentic. We celebrate all paths to God in gratitude, empowering self and others. 
We serve compassionately through outreach, inspiration, and education. That's who we are. That's why we're here. And here's what we do. Good morning. I'm Leticia, and here's what we do. Welcome to our live Virch service. We're here each week sharing this service with family and friends locally, around the country, and around the world. Click the share button. The more, the wider, the better. No one needs to feel isolated or alone hearing these. Birch is for everyone, and it's one way we stay together while apart. This morning service will be available on our YouTube channel, CSL Simi Valley, later today. The center's website, cslsimi.org, also has a link to archive services. This week, on the Wednesday night experience, get ready for a dip in the love pool, as Darlene Bellis invites you to dive into big joy. Darlene leads us in a practice to savor the big joy of living. She'll offer proof to increase our capacity for feeling fantastic. Her divine love affirming imagery meditation lulls you into connecting with your true nature and the infinite love energy that surrounds us always. August 26th at 7 p.m. Dive into the Love Pool on Zoom. The meeting ID number is 864-274 and the passcode is 473-831. The link and password will be sent with our weekly email blast and on Monday, you can find it on our website calendar. Wednesday night experience starts off with spiritual yoga for mind, body, and soul. Join Debbie Jarvis at 5.30. Here's the Zoom information for yoga. The meeting ID number is 878-5693-8671. And the passcode is 253-932. For those of you with children, or know someone with children, we invite you to check out our Play and Learn with Dr. Susan. Play and Learn lessons are posted on our YouTube channel, CSL Simi Valley. You can also watch Dr. Susan live, streaming on Sunday mornings at 9.30 on the CSL Simi website. If you'd like to make a cameo appearance on Sunday virtual service, a short video of yourself greeting the community or maybe you feel called to share an insight that has come to you as a result of our time apart. Be creative, be inspired, have fun. Email your clip to Reverend Stephen at RevStephen at CSLCME.org. Many thanks to all of you who maintained your regular giving while we have been apart. And to our new friends, we welcome your donations. You can use the donate button on our website, theostalcme.org, or try our new text to give feature. Text the word IBE to 805-600-5677. First timers, follow the prompts. Once complete, you can easily and quickly deductible conscious love offering. Following the service, Dr. Susan will be standing by at the church office to accept tithes over the phone. We are extremely grateful for your support. CSL Simi Valley staff, practitioners, and ministers are ready to provide emotional and spiritual support. Reach out to them for prayer or any questions that you may have by email or by calling the church office. Welcome to all of you viewing. Thanks for spending the morning with us. And now, a special treat from our friends. And Jamie Lula with Love.
Hey, Simi Valley, we're grateful that you're here. This is from Floyd Lula. We love you. Here we go. Two, three. name of love with a heart of grace overflow in us and decorate this place as it is below so it is above may we always stand in the name of love when the veil is gone there's only one of us only one in the name of love when the day is done we will sing this song all as one in the name of love in the name of love may we always be Seeking out the best Till we all are free Living in a world We've been dreaming of Where we stand as one In the name of love When the veil is gone There's only one of us Only one In the name of love When the sing this song all as one in the name of love in the name in the name of love in the name of love in the name in the name of love in the name of love, name of love. Name of love. when the In the name of love When the day is done We will sing this song All as one In the name of love When the veil is gone There's only one of us Only one In the name of love When the day is done We will sing this song in the name of love In the name, in the name of love In the name of love In the name, in the name of love In the name, in the name of love Oh, yeah In the name, in the name of love So the affirmation for today, I'll read it through once and then we will all say it together. I reveal the divine love at times hidden within, around, and through all, manifesting in infinite variety. So together, I reveal the divine love at times hidden within, around, and through all, manifesting in infinite variety. My reading today is from the Science of Mind textbook by Ernest Holmes. This is one of the little meditations in the back. Love to the world. My love goes out to everyone in the world. I do not exclude anything, for I love all nature and everything that is. 
My love warms and lightens everything that it touches and goes out into all places. The love flowing through me is a power to all who come into contact with it and all feel and know that I am love. Love within me is per complete and perfect. Love within me is complete. Join me in consciousness. We know that there is only love. There is only peace. There is only harmony. There is only love and life and light and joy and every good thing. That is the truth behind everything that is. And we know that each of us has those same attributes. Each of us is divine love and light and life and beauty and wisdom. And we are every good thing. And every good thing on this plane of existence flows through us. Right now, we take the time to make a conscious decision to enjoy this time of teaching, of wisdom, to be grateful for the center, however it shows up, knowing that the virtual attitude of the church is also real. It is spiritual. It is divine. Everything is divine. So with great gratitude for this center and this teaching and our teachers and everybody who makes this happen, we give great appreciation, great gratitude and thanksgiving. And we release this word to the law and the law makes it our experience right now when we affirm this and say together, and so it is. Hey, good morning, CME CSL, and good morning, Reverend Stephen. It's great to be back here again, and uh, at least virtually anyway. Uh, I love you guys, and uh, certainly, if not there in person, certainly there in spirit. And uh, speaking of the ties that bind, I think love is a, it's a tie that binds everything. And uh, sometimes in order to find a love, we have to go deep inside, and this is a song about that journey, about saying, okay, what is going on with me? How can I find the love? This song is called My Personal GPS. Go like this. Let me tell you about my angel, the one you never see, my everyday companion living deep inside of me. She guides me through the trenches She gets me out of every mess She ain't my Bible, she ain't my buddy She ain't my personal GPS Well, she leads me on the journey She leads me to the goal She's always on the money Never leaves me in the cold And every time I listen I wind up being truly blessed She's my Bible My buddy She's my personal GPS I'm at the fork in the road I gotta make a choice So much going on I don't heed her voice So I make a wrong turn Feeling lost and afraid Then I hear my angel calling Recalculate. Well, I gotta pay attention. This is powerful stuff. I gotta turn it on and I gotta turn it up. Cause every time I do it, you know I'm guaranteed success. She's my Bible, she's my buddy, she's my personal GPS. Yeah, she is. Play it, boy.
when I'm floating lost and lonely, I'm drifting in the dark, will I ever find a harbor? I don't see it on the chart, with some saying no, some else is saying yes, yes, yes. She's my Bible, she's my buddy, she's my personal GPS, yeah she is. She's my Bible, she's my buddy, crystal clear and never muddy. She's my Watson, she's my tunnel, never tardy, always prime. She's my shirt, she's my guide, never runs and never hides. Truly awesome, she's the best. She's my personal GPS, my personal GPS. She's my personal GPS, I say she. My personal GPS, yes, yes. You know what I mean, Reverend Stephen. Good to be with y'all. Join me now in our meditation, just a little gap in the service, where we're going to take some time to make a conscious connection with the divine. So we will keep the time for you for three minutes. This is such a delightful time, so I invite you to partake of it whenever you have a few minutes to spare. Namaste. It's 
to whisper you here in the midst of your fear it's revealing it's a part of the heart and it's just who we are it's so healing it's a power inside always wins over pride never judges and it strengthens and comforts us all It's a healer of souls, makes the broken ones whole and completed. It's what gives you the strength and the hope when you're feeling defeated. It's a compass and guide, and it can't be denied, so we trust it. It's a light in the dark. And it's patient and kind, and it's deaf, dumb, and blind to the madness. It's the ace of the dealer of truth, it's the healer of sadness. It's a place that you know from so long, long ago, and it's free. And you feel when it's there. Cause you're able to share from your being And it takes us all higher And it lifts and inspires all it touches mm -hmm. It's the best part of being alive That's what love is And it's patient and kind And it's deaf, dumb and blind to the madness It's the ace of the dealer of truth It's the healer of sadness It's beyond right or wrong And it's not weak or strong It's not winning For the young and the old It's a brave and a bold new It's the peace and the hope It's what helps us to cope It's forgiveness It's the light that will always endure It's eternal and simple and pure That's what love is That's what love is. Freebo, you are such a sweet talent and such a lovely man. Thank you for putting together such great music. And we love the background, the, all the records. Are those all your records? Do you own all those records? Are you on all those records? But it just looks so sweet and sound. And, and yes, that's what love is. Love is part of that tie that binds. That's today's talk. The tie, the tie. There it is. Wait, go, go talk. There you go. The tie that binds. <laughs> you know, there are so many obvious ties that bind us together. We can think family that binds us together. And uh, get a little correction there. Family that binds us together. Of course, friends. We, we feel like we're connected to our friends. Uh, some of us connected to our alma maters at this time of year. You know, we're thinking about the sports that we are having or that we aren't having and tied to your team, right, and all that kind of stuff. We're tied to our, our memories, our memories uh, that tie us to our past and help us to understand where we might be going with our future, that, 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 that kind of memory, you know. Um, so many ways that we're tied together. And as I was thinking about the ties that bind, I came upon a, an old memory, and it's, it's from my brother. You know, he does a lot of work with kids, He's what they call in Minnesota an artist in residence. We're talking about T. Michael, who sang the song for us a few weeks back. It's the only brother I got. He's my best brother. 
and my worst brother, because he's the only brother. <laughs> but he was doing this thing, uh, an event. He was doing this event, and um, there were a bunch of young kids at this event, and they were dressing up for it. It was a special. It was a special occasion, and they needed to wear ties. And one young boy came up to my brother after watching my brother tie his tie, came up and said, could you tie my tie? And he says, what, you don't know how to tie a tie? He goes, no, no one ever taught me. So my brother taught him how a tie to do the Windsor or half Windsor. I think he uses half Windsors. Some of us don't even remember those names anymore. In the, in the day of casual lifestyle, do we even wear ties? But at this event, they were wearing ties. Well, as soon as he finished tying the one tie for this one little kid, Another young boy walks up behind him and says, could you tie mine? And another behind him. And Michael asks, how come you guys don't have anybody? What, what's up that you don't know how to tie ties? No one ever taught us how. Because these young men, these young boys, didn't have a dad in the house that taught them how to tie a tie. So he created a Father's Day event where we honored our father at that event. It was an event called Tie the Knot, where he had on stage a bunch of young boys meeting with their fathers who then tied the knots of their ties. And for girls and daughters and fathers, he had them tie ribbons in their hair. Whew, what a touching moment of the tie that binds, the tie that binds us together, that love, that familiar connection. The tie that binds us to our city, to our state, to our nation, you know. But then there's some that are not so obvious ties. The tie of faith, the one that is the, the evidence of things unseen, right? The tie of all of us here on the planet is another one that we don't seem to always see. You know, there, there's a, uh, a condition that happens to astronauts. I can't remember what the official name of it is. I'm going to call it the space view condition. It's when they get up in outer space and they look back down on the planet and they see the swirling ball with the gray and white clouds and the blue oceans and the forgetting about there's no borders. And they suddenly get the realization that we are one people tied by this experience on this floating ball through space that holds us together with its fragile atmosphere that is being blown apart by our behavior. But in that sense, in that understanding of our unitary experience here on this planet, it got me to thinking about the way Thich Nhat Hanh talks about where we are in the process of interbeing, that we interbe with each other, that we are never alone, even when we think we are alone. He talks about, he uses the metaphor of the flower. He says, when you see the flower, you don't recognize all the non-flower parts of the flower that are a part of the flower but don't recognize as the flower. You see the petals. You maybe catch the aroma. You see the green leaves, the stem, the pistil. You see all the various aspects of the flower, but you don't see the rain. You don't see the sun, the non-flower parts. He says, I love this. He's so poetic. He says, when you touch the flower, you touch the cloud. When you touch the flower, you touch the cloud. The flower, in effect, the flower, in effect, has no separate self. The flower is, is all of the things. It is the sun. It is the cloud. It is the rain. It is the farmer who waters it and the farmer that planted the bulb if it was a, a, a purposely planted flower, not a wildflower out in the field. And even if it's a wildflower, it's the bird that perhaps ate the seed that then dropped the seed in its release into the soil that then becomes a flower. Wasn't that polite how I said the release? You know, you get what I'm talking about, right? But these, these things, these are, these, are, these are the elements that create the flower, but you don't see that. The flower is made up of non-flower elements. And you know what? You are. I am. We are the same. Our separate selves are really not separate from anything. We are made up of our non-flower parts. We are made up of the sun. We are made up of the elements of our ancestors who come with the DNA. We are made up of the foods that we eat that turn into muscle and sinew and bone. And how does that even happen? You know, but we are that. We are that. We are that tie that binds. But we want to celebrate exclusivity. We want to celebrate exceptionalism. It's so in vogue. We got to be exceptional. You, you're exclusive. If you're exclusive, you're special. That's all right. That's cool. But is it? Is it? For In my mind, what that means is I'm separating from my non-flower parts. I'm not accepting the wholeness that I am, and therefore I'm not accepting the inclusionary aspect of my life. 
if I'm going to be exceptionalism, I'm accepting a part of me that I'm, means I'm disavowing another part of me. And that's what's been happening in our country for so long. That's why people are out in the streets, because they're tired of, of disavowing a part of them that helps to make them exceptional in the first place. We live in this illusion of separateness, but it is truly an illusion. Good neighbors make good fences. Is that really true? It's so easy. I mean, you, you put up a fence and suddenly here in, in Southern California, the fences are so tall, you don't even know who your neighbor is unless there's an earthquake. You come outside and finally you go like, oh, what's your name? Oh, yeah, you're right. I got some mail from you one day, and I saw your name on the mail. But do you know people? Do you know your neighbors? And then people just build a gate and put up a community, and you're gated, and you're separated away from somebody. Separating is so easy to do, and we love doing it. We separate ourselves by our teams, by some of those ties that are obvious. We separate ourselves from our family. We separate ourselves by our city, our state, our nation. We separate ourselves by our friends. You're my friend. You're not my friend. You're my enemy. You're my friend. You're my partner. Oh, you went to that school, and you went to that school. We it's so easy to separate us. In fact, one of those great uh, science of mind or new thought writers of the early 19th century wrote, his name is Ralph Waldo Trine. And he says, anyone, any fool or idiot can be exclusive. It comes easy. It takes and it signifies a large nature to be universal, to be inclusive. Anyone. Anyone can be a fool or an idiot. Anyone can be exclusive. It's that easy. It's easy to build a wall, separate yourself, claim this thing, put these colors on and put those colors on and call yourself separate. But it takes, and it's significantly large nature, an open heart to, to stand in the universality of who we really are and to include everything in our nature. Oh, you know, I thought about this. If you'd like to see the quotes, we could put the quotes into the chat if you want to have the quotes for yourself. Uh, for later. So if you do that, just just say, yes, chat, put quotes in chat, and, and Reverend John will put the quotes in the chat for you. But back to this, because that's the way I want to include you. I want to include everybody as best as we can, right? But this idea of, of opening ourselves up to our larger universal nature, we're here to wake up. We're here to wake up from the illusion of separateness, and our universal nature is truly to evolve. Spirit loves to expand. It wants the soul wants to grow, and the soul grows through inclusion. Nothing is actually separate from anything. Can you separate, can you truly separate the air from the tree? Can you separate the smells of the rose from the smell of the, of the, of the, of the gardenia? It's all, yeah, I mean, you, you can try. You can think you've separated it, but you're just, think, you're just thinking it. But when you feel it, it's all sweet. It's all beautiful. It's all divine. And it's the divine. It's that soul connection that is our partner in stepping out into the universal experience, in stepping out into that larger nature, in stepping out to that space where we're always connected, stepping out to the tie that binds. You see, we can separate ourselves easily, but there is an umbilical cord, an umbilical cord to the soul, and the umbilical cord to the soul is never separate, never severed. It, th those, those apron strings don't get cut. We can ignore them, we can think they're not there, but they're always there. We always have available to us our Anamkara. It's Gaelic for soul friends. John O'Donohue's great book, Anamkara. Gaelic for soul friends. I've got a group of friends called Anamkara, and we truly are. We are soul friends. We are connected on that level. And through that connection, it's a powerful way to move in the universe, and a powerful way to move in the world. When we can connect with the tie that binds that soul tie, that umbilical cord to the divine that's always feeding us constantly, but sometimes we crimp it, we cut it off. But you know what? It's just waiting for our consciousness to uncrimp it, and then the divine circuit flows back to us again, and impulses and, in, and inspiration and intuition reveals to us what exactly right for us to do, and through that connection, we accomplish amazing things. The power of universal connectivity is like, okay, simple stuff. You go to a football stadium. You're rooting for your favorite team. The energy in that stadium is amazing. Going to a great concert, and you're all singing the same song. I mean, look at the dead. The deadheads are still celebrating, and there's no band anymore because the connection is so strong. 
That connection is so strong. That, that universal connection, that's what led people out into the streets in the 1960s and back out into the streets today. Because we understand that you and I are one. That, that I am my brother's keeper. You see, the divine, the divine spirit that connects us all, that is uber powerful. And I'm not talking about a driving car. I'm talking about a driving soul, a driving soul. But first, but first, for that power to really work in our, in our, in our personal lives and in our collective lives, for it to accomplish great things in our collective lives, we must unify with that power. The tie that binds is always there, but as I say, we can consciously crimp the umbilical cord to the soul, but if we connect with it consciously, if we decide every day, wake up, I am one with the divine. There is one life. That life is God. That life is my life now. That is the creed of the science of mind. People say science of mind has no dogma. It has no creeds. We have dogma. It's at the front of the Science Mind text, uh, uh, time, Science Mind magazine. I'm looking to see if I have one. But it's at the front there. It's what we believe, the Declaration of Principles. And our creed, there is one life. That life is God. That life is my life now. That's what anchors our teaching. And when you unify with that teaching, as Dr. Holmes tells us, a unity must be established and a conscious connection must be made before we can derive the benefits which the greater mind is willing to reveal or impart to us. Do you see there? So the benefits are there, right? The greater mind is willing. It will reveal it and it will impart it to us. Here's the caveat. A connection must be made. You must plug into it. None of this stuff today works without being plugged into I just love Reverend Johan. This is so perfect. Thank you. Here's a ton. The Declaration of Principles I was talking about. Here they are. Every every magazine has them right here. What is it? It's on page where? I'm going to go through this. Don't make me wrong, magazine. There they are. Page 10. Right inside. Every time. You want to see what we're all about? That's what we believe. It's beautiful. We believe in God, the living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute, self-existent cause. That's who we are. And when we can t connect with that, that powerful, that powerful energy, whew, amazing stuff can happen. Each and every one of us, each and every one of us is designed to lead this charge of inclusivity. Each and every one of us is designed to see the diversity and express it as unity. Each one of us is designed to pull every petal of the flower into one full blossom of perfection, of goodness, and wholeness, and life. And I'm saying each and every one of us is a leader, and here's the deal. As we lead, we will gather followers. And when we gather followers, our power exponentially increases. We've seen it happen. We've seen it happen with just one person standing up for the injustice that was felt. Actually, it was three people standing up about the injustice that was felt, and suddenly a whole movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, was born. That's the power of leaders exponentially expanding through followers. That's the upside to connectivity. The other upside to connectivity the other upside to the tie that binds, that tie, that soul umbilical cord that's, that's connecting to each and every one of us to the divine spirit, that energy right there is in love with something as well as you, as well as me. It's in love with novelty. Spirit is in love with newness. And the newness of life expresses through us. Jesus said, I am the God of the living. I am here to represent the God of the living, not the God of the dead. And the reason it said the God of the living is because we are here to resurrect, you see. Resurrect doesn't just mean coming back from the dead. Resurrect means to make use of again, to be of use again. Each and every one of us, if you feel, if you feel in any way that you have lost your ability to be of use, it's not possible. Everyone is waiting for a moment of resurrection. And see, that moment happens now. And here's the interesting thing. The now moment, the now moment is informed from the past that leads us into our future. 
but it's all happening now. So it's important. Yes, God is God of the living, but not to say that we reject or lose our past. We look at our past, and it's because of our past that we're seeing that there's injustice in places for us to go now into our future. Okay? And here's the other part of this leader follower thing. The other part of this tie that binds is that we are all here bonded to a similar journey. A similar journey where we are here to catch each other. It's like um, in, in, in the 12-step community, there's a concept of uh, one hand down, one hand up. They have the sponsor and sponsee situation. So the sponsor reaches down to help the sponsee, but the sponsor has a sponsee. To, a spon- a sponsor is a sponsee as well. And that's how we are. We are always in the uh, in this transitional space where we're we're putting, being pulled by someone in some some concept or some ideal that's above us, and we are pulling someone or some ideal behind us as we move through this experience of growing, of being, of the living. You see, and, and, and that hand down, hand up, it's part of nature's, nature's divine intelligence. It seems, nature is interesting. It, it, it's, it's so wonderful to watch. It seems like it's effortless in how it does what it does. But, and in its effortlessness, that's a lot of words, in its effortlessness, it creates seed time and harvest time. The seed time is when the idea be develops. The harvest time is when we capture the idea. We're seeing ideas being captured now. And here's the thing about that. We all share the capacity to harvest for one another. We are all here to help each other. In fact, as uh, um, uh, Karen Casey and, and, Martha, uh, and, and Martha Vanceberg say in The Promise of a New Day, perhaps we need reminding that each of us carries within us the remedy for another's ills. Likewise, someone among us awaits our call for help. But tau, right? That's sweet. That's the sweet, that's part of the sweet tie that binds us together. That that I'm here to help another's ills and another has answers to mine. That's my non-flower self is contained within you and your non-flower self is contained within me and we are here together to help us both blossom into the most beautiful flower we can be. That's like, whoa. That's the upside to connectivity. That's the upside to, to developing that unity, that, to, that unifying to that divine connection. That's why every day, every day, I woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on spirit, reminding myself that there is one life and that life is God and that life is my life now. These are conscious reminders we must have to make for ourselves every day because we live in a world of good fences making bad neighbors and gated communities separating each other from each other. We live in a space of exceptionalism and exclusivity when it's really about diversity and inclusivity. It's about our universal nature to evolve and to let spirit expand by means of us, to be that tie that binds. We are bound to the divine call. And I'm asking, what are you hearing? What are you hearing when you listen to that divine call? Are you imagining and seeing the power that you have, the energy that you have, that develops a, a compassion, a passionate compassion to jump out there into the streets and to do what needs to be done, to stand up and speak, speak truth to power, to share to the loved one a lesson that might be a little hard to hear, but comes genuinely from the heart. That's a transformative passion I'm talking about. And that kind of passion is born out of experience. Remember the sponsor sponsy thing? Born out of experience. I have been there and I have seen this. Maybe this might help you too. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm offering you my non-flower elements to see if they might nurture and fertilize your flower growth. That happens through connection. Alana Fairchild says, working together with conscious intent would make human beings very potent spiritual change agents and the world would be transformed and it'll be transformed quickly. Working together with conscious intent would make human beings very potent spiritual change agents. The world will be transformed and it'll be transformed quickly quickly. Are you ready for some quick transformation? It's up to us. If not, who? What? If not you, who? (laughs) Right? If not now, when? That's the phrase. I love it. And that's that's where we are. 
We're seeing, we're seeing the, the spiritual change agents happening in our world today. We see them out in the streets. We see medical community racing to try to put together a vaccine for, for, for COVID. We're, we're seeing the rallies that have taken place around climate. We're seeing how the Australians and the New Zealands and the Europeans and the Canadians are coming together to California to help, to help fight fires. We're, we, we, are, we are celebrating 100 years this, this past week, a hundred years of suffrage for the uh, women in our community and 50 years for black folks in America with the Civil Rights, the Voting Rights Act, um, that, that we had the right but to, to really nail it down. And we need to back that up some more. Get out there, you know, get out. I'm not telling you who to vote for, but do vote. You got to vote. That's part of the tie that binds. We get to speak. That's our non-flower element. We get to speak. Soul power. Soul power is what I'm talking about. Soul power is running through that umbilical cord to which we are all connected, and that power opens us up to constructive channels. That power opens us up to see that around us, hidden within everything, moving through everything, is a divine love. And that divine love shows up in a myriad of varieties and styles and creative elements and manifestations and it is ours to reveal it to hold it and to remind ourselves that we are bound to it we are bound to the tie that binds join me now as we say our affirmation together i reveal divine love at all times hidden within around and through all manifesting in infinite Variety. <sighs> yes. Mm. That I I uh, <laughs> I'm speechless because I'm just still thinking about the tie that binds me as I move into into a moment of prayer. This is our time for our our healing prayer, and in our healing prayer, I invite everyone right now to just. Spend a moment thinking about how that divine love that's hidden in, through, and around everyone can be more better, more better, more fully, <laughs> more beautifully expressed. And we know that through our treatment, we have the opportunity to express that more fully. And that's why we go into the healing prayer mode. I'm going to look over and see if we have any, none yet. So if you have... Yeah, we're a little bit delayed on the comments, but if you have a prayer request, I want to remind everyone you can put it in the comment chat. We will share that with our practitioners, and they will hold those prayers in consciousness with you uh, throughout the week. But also, you know, I love how science is working together with um, with 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 all the thoughts that we have, and quantum the quantum field has done some interesting experiments around the idea of cause and effect, and we we think of it as a linear thing that cause uh, effect follows cause, but in the quantum field they've actually seen it go the other way. It's 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 a very uh, uh, confusing idea in some ways, but perhaps in others it's not. From a metaphysical perspective, we understand that everything already exists in the universe. Everything is already there. So if it's already there the effect is already lasting and so when we call out the cause when we say we want to bring this into our lives and the effect is already there because it's in the universe hmm is the effect in, in front of the cause it doesn't even matter what matters is how we bring our consciousness to be the attractors of our good in our lives let's attract some good in our lives right now by understanding right here and now that there is one life that life being God, that life manifesting as me, as you, and as every person here on this Zoom virch opportunity of sharing at this moment. And so in this connective way of being, I'm recognizing that divine presence is manifesting as good in the lives of every person here, showing up as harmony, as right ideas, as the... Uh, the resolution of conflict as the healing of the physical body, the healing of the money body, the healing of the emotional body, so that those that are dealing with any forms of lack or limitation, fear or doubt, are right now soothed with an understanding that in that infinite presence,
presence that is surrounding all, there is the good ready, available, and waiting for our divine call. And right now, in this moment, we make that call. We reach out into the universe. We reach out to that infinite knowing, and we just affirm the truth and claim it and declare it as the great way sure Jesus said, I claim and declare, and then we say, thank you you that's mine and grab it in consciousness and hold it as it becomes the reality of our lives and then we are led into the recognition of it we are led into the intuitive steps that take us order my steps dear lord into my good here and now that's how it works that's how we affirm it that's why we embody it and hold the equivalent of our good in mind and then see that equivalent out pictured in life I affirm that process for each and every person listening right now. I call that process good. I say, thank you, Mother, Father, God. Thank you, Divine Presence. Thank you, Infinite Spirit, for the power of this prayer and the power of this knowing and the truth unfolding. And so it is. Okay. So it is. And so I bring you back. Ooh, what a treat. More Freebo. Here he is. Freebo. Hey everybody, here's another song about love. I had a dream, a vision. I woke up singing in the middle of the night. Cause the world had finally got it right. It had nothing to do with history Which side had lost the one It had everything, everything to do with love When you hear a voice calling Somewhere inside you Saying you're not alone And the music fills your heart with hope It's got nothing to do with boundaries Thinking you gotta be tough It's got everything Everything to do with love It's got everything Everything to do with love With our differences behind us the world looks new maybe something as simple as kindness could see us through well it takes as long as it takes and you know it when the moment is right you hear somebody singing in the morning light so much hope to hold on to So many songs that be sung It's got everything, everything to do with love It's got everything, everything to do with love I had a dream, a vision I woke up singing in the middle of the night Cause the world had finally got it right There's so much hope to hold on to So many songs to be sung It's got everything, everything to do with love Everything to do with love Yes it does It's got everything Everything to do with love Everything 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 to do with love
Hi everyone, this is Reverend Johanna and we're coming to the section in our service that is now called Contemplating Abundance and Offering. Contemplating abundance because we are abundant. That is our true nature. But what I know for myself is that I need to consciously contemplate that for it to manifest in my life. So, you know, you're all abundant people and we want to make sure that you experience that in your life. So the quote for today to contemplate is it's from Catherine Ponder from her book, The Millionaires of Genesis. You have to become aware of pros prosperity. You have to become aware of prosperity, even lavish abundance in an outer way in order to demonstrate it in your own life. Bless and appreciate the wealth of the universe and the success of other people. Bless and appreciate the wealth of the universe and the success of other people. So keep that thought in mind as we do our affirmation before our giving. Join together, say it along with me if you're at home. And if you don't say it out loud, just let the words ring in your mind so that you can embody this idea as Catherine Ponder was sharing with us. We bless and appreciate the wealth of the universe and bless and appreciate your own wealth and your own success as we say this together. Divine love is doing its perfect work here and now. Divine love harmonizes. Divine love adjusts. Divine love prospers. Divine love foresees everything and richly provides every good thing for CSL Simi Valley. Now, divine love is victorious. The truth is, there is only goodness. There is only God. We give from our divine inheritance of love and joy and peace and health and life. We are in the flow. Everything we give to this center, we give to ourselves, to our community, and to the world at large. We bless and we are blessed. We are blessed and we bless. The circle is complete. We are grateful for these tithes and offerings, and so it is. And here is the recap for today's talk that Reverend Stephen gave on the ties that bind. So let's start. Ties that bind us, for example, the tithe, the tie, not the tithe, the tie of faith. The tie of faith ties us to the divine. And we are one people on this beautiful blue-green ball in the universe. We're all tied together. We are never alone. Even if we think we are alone, we're not. Because we are interdependent. It's our nature. We're here to wake up. When we don't accept the wholeness that we are, we really don't accept inclusivity. Spirit 
and we are expressions of spirit, spirit loves to expand. So we need to become aware of our big heart, of our larger nature and expand. In God, we have a partner to step out in our universal nature. Actually, we have an umbilical cord to the divine. The divine always feeds us, shows us what our next step is. It is all powerful and we must unify with that divine power. Declare and know for yourself, I am one with the divine. You know, there's an upside to connectivity because with connectivity, we support each other. Every one of us is a leader in displaying connectivity. Spirit is in love with newness and spirit expresses that newness through us. We're all here on a similar journey to catch each other. We're supported by someone and we support someone. We are blessed and we bless, as Reverend Rob just said. We're always connected to the divine call, if we recognize it or not. The divine call that life is really about diversity and inclusivity. Reverend Stephen posed the question, what do you hear when you listen to the divine? When we align with our soul power and connect, we are powerful change agents in the world. And it's ours to practice remembrance of divine love. And that's it. Have a wonderful week from me to you. There's more to come. And I will post the link to Apre Virch, an opportunity to come together after service. Take care. Thank you, Reverend Johanna. Beautiful. All right. So we have come to the end of another Virch service. Great thing about Virch on Facebook and also later today on YouTube is if there's any part that you missed or anything you want to recap uh, beyond what Reverend Johanna just did is to just go back and check it out because it'll be posted for you. It'll also be on our YouTube channel later today. Tell your friends. Man, oh, man. Such a great uh, day. And oh, Thanks to everyone who came out last night for the um, comedy night. Uh, Jason Love and four of his friends. It was fantastic. Uh, Gina Stallhaven, uh, Kayvon, Carlos Oscar, the man with two first names, and oh, how could I even forget? Johnny Beaner. <laughs> it was a great time. Hopefully we'll do something like that again. So it's now time to close our service with our, our benediction. This is another way that we center ourselves in our teaching. Like our mission tells us where we are, the benediction tells us who we are. Here it is, right? I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. I release. I let go. See you next week.